coolness and four bright stars in the evening sky. Welcome to Stargazers. I'm James Alberry, And I'm Dean Regis. And I'm Marlene Hidalgo. We're here to help you be sure you know what you're seeing in the night sky when you look up. Next week, we will see the moon making a close pass by Venus in the evening sky. Yeah, just two days after it did a hit and run over the sun. Oh, you mean the solar eclipse on Sunday, May 20th? Moon sure gets around, doesn't it? Let's show you. Look low in the west about 45 minutes after sunset Tuesday night and you'll see a gorgeous slender sliver of a two-day-old moon just to the left of brilliant Venus. Try not to miss this last great evening moon Venus scoochie. There will be no more of them until about this time next year. The moon will climb higher and get fatter each night all next week as it heads closer to the red gold planet Mars. The first quarter moon will be just below Mars on May 28th. Mars is worth getting to know better because it'll be visible in the western sky at sunset all summer long, while Venus won't. Venus will drop lower each night as it gets closer to us. And remember that Venus will soon cross the face of the sun on June 5th for the U.S. This transit of Venus is a very rare celestial event that has been seen only six times before. And after this one, there won't be any more until 2117, so don't wait until next time. If you have a small telescope, get it out and take a look at Venus in the evening sky. Venus is super bright, so you should be able to find it easily. Venus will look just like a thin crescent moon and for the exact same reason. Most of the daytime sunlit portion of Venus will be facing away from us here on Earth, just the same as when we see a thin crescent moon. Most of its sunlit side is facing away from us. Remember that when we see the moon or any of the planets, we are really seeing reflected light from the sun. Let's take a look at four of the bright stars in this part of the evening sky. We'll mark them C, C, and P, P. Now, most of us live in brightly lit cities, so we don't get to see most of the faint stars, but the bright stars still show up even in our light-polluted skies. The C star to the right is the brightest of the four and is named Capella in the constellation Auriga. Capella is the same temperature and color as our sun, but it's about 14 times as wide. Capella is the farthest of the four at about 42 light years away. The next brightest is the P star at the left. Procyon is Orion's little dog. Maybe the P is for pooch? Procyon is a bit hotter than the sun and about twice as big. Procyon is the closest of the four, only 11 light years away. Look above Procyon for Mars and you'll see they are the same brightness. Mars will dim rapidly though and in a month will be only half as bright as it is now. The next in brightness is another P star, Pollux in the Gemini Twins. It is less than half as bright as Capella, but still puts on a good show in the evening sky. Pollux is about the same temperature as the sun, but it is 10 times bigger, and its light takes three times as long as the light from Procyon, 34 years to get here. The dimmest of the four, and our final C star, is ironically the hottest of the four. But Castor is also the most distant at 52 light years away. Castor is a multiple star system and has at least six stars making up what you see as a single starry point of Castor. Let's see what the two C's and two P's are again. From brightest to dimmest, Capella, Procyon, Pollux, and Castor. And be sure to catch the skinny crescent moon close to Venus just after sunset on Tuesday the 22nd. And if you can't see the solar eclipse on May 20th in person, be sure to go to stargazersonline.org to see a webcast or a rerun if you missed it. Keep, Keep looking, looking up! up.